What's up, everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you at 2.35 in the morning here in Louisiana. I'm up doing my research. I wanted to try to put together something for everybody on exactly what a margin call was and what we could look forward to if brokerages and smaller apps end up getting margin called. What exactly could you be looking to? So I go to doing my research and I and I remembered Robinhood at a margin call. So I ran over and Googled margin calls for Robinhood and stuff. And I mean, I remember the story when it was first came out. I didn't believe it, but I remember the story. And uh, in doing my research, I come across this article here. It said Robin, Robinhood CEO details 3 a.m. call to put $3 billion up. All right. And when I clicked on it, I realized <laughs> this is a CNN article, which is red flag number one. You pretty much can't believe anything that they say. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. I just don't believe in watching CNN unless to get the opposite perspective and see what's and balance it out. But other than that, <laughs> CNN is full of shit. Then when I get here, I see this asshole and I'm thinking, now nah, I'm really, my guard is really up because if Como's got something to say about something, it's usually bullshit. So, and you can't believe none of it. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. That's just the way I view things. I want you to address the obvious. This looks like a move by an outfit called Robin Hood, which is supposed to be taken from the rich and given to the poor and doing exactly the opposite, that when the big guys, including one of your main investors in your company, started to lose, you shut down the game to starve the little guy. So when I started watching this video, the first thing that come to my attention was how Como is so animate in protecting the retail investors and how dare Robin Hood turn off that buy button. And I'm thinking to myself, now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me Chris is defending retail investors? That was the first clue to me that something's not right about that narrative. To say, hey, look at how you screwed up. What's your explanation? The man's explanation is something y'all need to hear. Because he's trying to tell everybody... This is why we turned off the buy button. Now, y'all already know, sort of. Then I find this post from The Verge. It's the Wall Street Bets mod tweet that says, individual investors are being stripped of their ability to trade on Robinhood app. Meanwhile, hedge funds and institutional investors can continue to trade as normal. What do you call a market? that removes retail investors' ability to buy to save institutional investors' shorts, okay? This tweet, this Wall Street Bets mod was the one that started the narrative that the buy button disappearing robbed retail of their investment opportunities. But let's hear what Vlad had to actually say concerning the removal of the buy button. And I think you're going to get a better understanding of what really happened on January 28th. That's not what it is at all. And I know you started this segment. Um, it really resonated with me because you you described the story of Robinhood. Robinhood started five years ago by pioneering commission-free, no-account minimum mobile investing. Vlad, we're not interested in you kissing Chris Como's ass. Just tell us why you took the buy button. Well, I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100 percent clear. This decision was not made on the direction of any market maker or uh, other market participants. There's so why did you do it? Decision. Robin Hood, uh, as a brokerage, has lots of financial requirements, SEC requirements. We have to put up money at clearing houses. The amount of money that we have to put up depends on market volatility and we're in historic uh we're in a historic situation where 
there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols that are going viral on social media. So we haven't really seen anything like this before. And to, to prudently manage uh, the, the risk and the deposit requirements, uh, we had to restrict buying in these 13 stocks. Okay, that's interesting. He just stated that the reason Robinhood removed the buy button was because of deposit regulations in accordance with their clearinghouse. So I dug a little deeper and I found this story here in Fortune Mag, uh, Fortune. The real story behind the Robin Hood's decision to restrict GameStop trading and that 4 a.m. call to put up $3 billion. Now, before I show you the article, I want to remind you of something that we've all heard this story that at three o'clock in the morning, depends on where you're at in the country, but he got it at four in the morning. He gets a call. We need $3 billion. That was a margin call, we've been told. Well, as I dug a little deeper, I found out that it wasn't a margin call, that the call did not come from the clearinghouse. Here's what really happened. All right. It says here, market watchers are buzzing about a phone call in the early hours of Thursday morning between Robin Hood and his clearinghouse over a $3 billion demand for cash. The call led to the popular stock buying app to limit trades in GameStop and other shares, and also touched off conspiracy theories and colorful interviews between Robinhood CEO and Elon Musk. While the dust around the last Thursday's events had mostly settled, the details of what happened are still trickling out. The controversy to some reports, the clearinghouse did not call Robinhood CEO Vlad, that's what we were told, and nor did Tenev persuade the clearinghouse to change its mind. Now, there were no negotiations, he says. While Robin Hood's CEO was indeed awakened from sleep by a frantic call, that call came from the company's own operations team, not the NSCC. Okay? It did not come from the clearinghouse. It did not come from NSCC. The call came at four o'clock in the morning for $3 billion from the company's operations team. Let's dig a little deeper. While Robinhood's SEO was indeed, oop, the reason for the call was a letter Robinhood had received from the NSCC setting out its daily collateral demands. Such letters go out to around 100 brokerages at seven o'clock in the morning on the West Coast where Robinhood is based every morning. So receiving one came as no surprise. Robinhood had received a letter from the NSCC, a letter that goes out every day to a, a, about 100 brokers who tell them what their, require, their deposit requirements are in accordance to what they have sold. Okay? That's where the call come from. What a surprise was the request to post $3 billion in cash, a staggering amount, even for a well-funded company like Robinhood. Ordinarily, there would be no reason for such a sum, but last week's trading was anything but ordinary. A pitch battle between hedge funds and retail investors drove a staggering run-up in the price of stocks like GameStop, AMC, fueling unprecedented volume and volatility. Stop. Now, think about this. Robin Hood gets a letter that gets printed every day in SCC telling them what their deposit requirements are in accordance to the shares that they have sold. Robin Hood, it appears, was over that amount by $3 billion. Now the company need to know how are we going to fix this. So, knowing that there's high volatility, more people will be buying, the more capital they're going to have to put up in order to secure those shares, they decided to put a stop to buying. Therefore, they would not have to deposit any more money for securities that they sell because at that moment, they're not selling any. Common fucking sense. So, his decision to remove the buy button was simply for they couldn't afford the deposit requirement 
because they had sold their limit, they had sold over their limit, and they had to come up with the $3 billion to cover their limit, and they could not cover their limit if people kept buying. It kept adding to the deposit requirement. So to stop that and to pay what needed to be paid, they froze these 13 stocks. Why? Because they were super, super volatile. Everybody, FOMO had kicked in, and everybody was buying the stock. In order to stop the deposit requirement, Robinhood suspended trading of those stocks. Really nothing nefarious. It's kind of like this. At the donut shop, we have a waiter app, okay? We make four cinnamon twists. I sell three cinnamon twists. I only have one left. I need that for a customer if they come in the store. So I remove cinnamon twists off the available menu. Now, somebody that's wanting to order from waiter and they see that cinnamon twist is missing off the menu. And how dare I not want to sell them a cinnamon twist? And then you can come up with all kinds of theories. Maybe they don't want me to have cinnamon. Why do they not want me to have cinnamon? When it has no evil intention at all, except for I cannot, I cannot take an order for cinnamon twist because we are out. Basically, Robin Hood is saying we could not take any more orders for GameStop because we were over our limit in the deposit requirements. So we had to suspend trading so that we could catch up the deposit requirements and then we turned it back on and allow trading again. Nothing nefarious, people. Nothing nefarious. We were told the nefarious storyline by the Wall Street bet mods. But today you look at it and go, oh, that's a, that's a Reddit post. The man said, they were going to require too much money from us. So we stopped trading because we could not make that deposit. End of story. If you want to continue to believe this bullshit theory that they did it because they wanted to get the shorts. Listen, 600 million shares of AMC still traded on the 28th, even with the buy button missing. Who was buying? The hedge funds. The market makers that needed the shares, they were covering. And I, he's going to make his last point, and then this video's over with. But I think you'll understand now what really happened on January 28th. But customers that held them could sell throughout. Uh, thousands of other securities and stocks on our platform were available to freely trade. And our number one priority, as you mentioned, is to make sure our platform is reliable, stable for our customers. We're serving our customers and giving them the power to turn it back on as soon as prudent. If you put away whatever the fucking YouTubers and all have told you and listen to what the man says, he tells you why they turned that buy button off. To close this video out, I'm going to give you a scenario. Hope you can use common sense to figure out the solution. People wanting cinnamon twists. So many people want a cinnamon twist. I'm out of cinnamon twist. I have to remove it from the menu. You can order any other donut other than the cinnamon twist. Why? Because I don't have any. Same thing Vlad was trying to say. Vlad was trying to say volatility was coming in so heavy for these particular 13 stocks. The requirement for deposit to cover those positions was too high. We could not do it. Therefore, we turned the buy button off. You could not buy the cinnamon twist. You could not buy GME. You could not buy AMC. Why? Because they could not afford the deposit requirement to cover your position. Now, here's the scenario you need to consider. Right now, you're asking yourself, how can they drag this on? How can they keep selling synthetic and naked positions? Why won't the SEC step in? Stop. You're the one requesting the buy button be turned back on. Remember? You're the one said that you were getting fucked because they couldn't take any more orders of GME and AMC. When it wasn't that they wouldn't take any more orders, they couldn't take any more because their capital could not sustain it. But because of the crying, they turned the motherfucker back on and they started selling. I get the phone call. You didn't have a cinnamon twist in, your, in the bag. Well, we're out. Would you let me order it? What do you mean? How are you going to keep it? 
letting me people order cinnamon twists, and you ain't got none. Same position Robin Hood was in. How are you going to tell us we can't buy cinnamon twists, yet then in the same voice you're going, how dare you not sell me cinnamon twists? I don't have any. I don't care. I want to be able to buy it anyway, even though you ain't got none. Okay. Turn the waiter back on. Order all the cinnamon twists you want, motherfuckers. We don't have the cinnamon twists to give to you. Just like they were saying, we ain't got the, the money to back the security. And then people were wondering, well, how are you still selling it? Because you asked us to do it. As simple as that, people. So I hope this brings a little clarity to you. I love you. Be blessed. Except what the reality of this shit is. Except what the Reddit people are telling you. And what these fucked up YouTubers keep telling you. They turned the buy button off because they didn't have the money to continue to sell the shares and cover it in the NSCC, which is what we, we need them to do now. But if they turned off that buy button, a lot of motherfuckers will go to crying. Why won't you sell us something you can't afford? <laughs> it's just retarded sometimes, people. How motherfuckers think. Turn the cinnamon twist button off if you ain't got none. If you can't afford the fucking shares or to pay the people for the shares or have the shares for backup, then turn the buy buttons off. It's that simple. Love you. Be blessed.